Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, here on the floor we have a significant proposal, a proposed constitutional amendment to rewrite the first amendment to the Constitution, the first portion of the Bill of Rights. And it would fundamentally alter and take away certain free speech rights of millions upon millions of Americans. Not a few, not a few ultra wealthy, many, many Americans. I have a real problem with that. I think it's misguided. And instead, I think we should focus on other proposals, other provisions that can address what we all see and feel and hear from our constituents, the huge gap they see between Washington and the real world, Washington and Main Street, USA. It's also unfortunate, Madam President, that this I believe is the first time in U.S. Senate history that we're debating a constitutional amendment on the floor of the Senate with no opportunity so far, zero opportunity of floor amendments. Unheard of. And that's unfortunate. And that's why I bring up two proposed floor amendments that I would strongly, strongly support that go to that real problem in America of Washington placing itself up here separate and apart, higher than the American people in the real world. The first idea was a floor amendment offered by my colleague Tom Coburn of Oklahoma. I strongly support it. I have the leading bill regarding this proposal in the Senate, term limits, term limits for members of Congress. I believe this is a significant step, but it's one, unfortunately, necessary and long overdue because of the separation I've described between Washington and the real world. Americans of all political parties, all backgrounds, all races, think that Washington's on a different planet, and members of Congress just don't get it because they come up here and go Washington. We need to get back to the best traditions of our democracy, which include having true citizen legislators to come here to serve, to represent their constituents, yes, but for a limited period of time, knowing absolutely they're returning home after significant but limited service. I strongly support Senator Coburn's amendment. I strongly support the same provisions in my standalone bill. And I urge Senator Reid to, again, open up the floor of the Senate. Let's have the process the founders intended. Don't be the first U.S. Senate leader in history to shut down all amendments under a constitutional amendment under debate on the floor. The second proposal, which is a floor amendment I have at the desk, also goes to the same concern of Washington living on a different planet than real world America. And it has to do with what I call the Washington exemption from Obamacare. Now, in the Obamacare statute, we actually passed through an amendment on the floor, through being able to pass a floor amendment, language that says every member of Congress, all of our staff, should be treated like all other Americans who are forced to go to the so-called exchanges. We will go to the exchanges for our health care no special deal, no special exemption, no special subsidy, no special carve-out. Unfortunately, after that floor amendment passed, after the overall bill passed, I guess some folks took Nancy Pelosi's advice, we have to pass the bill in order to read it. So after the fact, some folks around here started to read it, and they got to that provision and said, oh, you know what, how are we going to deal with this? And so a furious lobbying campaign began, which resulted in President Obama issuing an executive order, a special rule, which is clearly illegal in my opinion, because it's contrary to the statute, to create special treatment, a special carve out, a special subsidy for members of Congress and our staff. That's not right. And we should live by that original language passed right here on the Senate floor in a floor amendment. 
we should say the first rule of Demer American democracy should be that what Washington passes on America, it lives with itself. And we should treat ourselves the same way as we treat other Americans who have to go to the exchanges under Obamacare. That should be the first rule of American democracy. What we pass for America, we live with ourselves because that's the right thing to do. That's the right principle. Also, for a very practical reason, because, you know, sometimes the chefs in the kitchen should eat their own cooking because sometimes that makes the cooking get a whole lot better. It's a very practical rule to follow. So, Madam President, I urge support for this proposal, and I urge an open amendment process and a real debate, which unfortunately heretofore has been completely shut down. And I urge consideration of this amendment. I urge us to place ourselves along with everyday Americans in how we're treated under Obamacare and everything else. And I urge full debate and consideration of the measure and then passage of it. So, Madam President, to further that, I ask unanimous consent that when the Senate resumes consideration of SJ Res 19, that it be in order for my amendment numbered 3786 to be called up. Is there objection? Madam President. Senator from Connecticut. Reserving the right to object. Uh, senators heard the reasons for these objections before, uh, but the fact is, is that staff working here in the Senate are covered by the exact same plan that is offered under the exchange to millions of Americans. It works just like it's always worked before for employees here in the United States Senate and frankly for millions of employees in the private sector. Uh, Senate employees, House employees pay their premiums and the employer picks up their employer share. No different than it's always been before. Specifically, the law doesn't allow for any employees here to take advantage of the tax credits that are available to many other Americans. And this is, of course, just another attempt to undermine a law that is by every available metric working. The uninsurance rate in this country is plummeting. Health care inflation is at a Madam President, reclaim low. the floor because I think there is objection. I'd like to reclaim the floor and, and finish my statement. outcomes are getting better. Uh, for that reason, uh, Madam President, uh, I object. Objection is heard. Madam President, reclaiming the floor. Uh, it's from simply. Yeah, thank you, Madam President. Madam President, as the gentleman knows, it's simply not true that we're being treated on the exchange like other Americans. That's flat out not true. No other American at our income level is getting the huge subsidy that members of Congress are getting. I'm not accepting it, but that members of Congress are getting under the President's illegal rule. No other American at our income level. No other American gets that deal, and that was nowhere mentioned and nowhere included in the amendment we passed on this topic during the Obamacare debate. So what the gentleman says is just flat out misleading. If he wants us truly to be treated like other Americans under the exchange, absolutely, that's what I'm asking for. But don't pretend that present practice does that. It does exactly the opposite. And the American people are sick and tired of it. The American people are sick and tired of being put down as second class and Congress and Washington lifting itself up as above them. That's the fundamental thing that's wrong with American democracy today. That's what my amendment goes to with regard to treatment under Obamacare. That's what Senator Coburn's amendment goes to with regard to term limits for members of Congress. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor.